Before the tabloids nicknamed Lisa Nowak an Astro Nut, she lived an accomplished life. Even as a child, she always knew she wanted to be an astronaut, and her drive for that dream took her to the furthest reaches of our universe. She fixated on her goals with a focus you don't usually see in little kids. By the time she was in her 40s, though, she'd done everything she'd set out to accomplish in her career at NASA and her fixations morphed into a terrifying obsession after an affair with a fellow astronaut crashed and burned. But the overachieving Lisa wasn't ready to let William Ophelin out of her orbit just yet. Hey, thanks for watching True Crime Recaps. I'm Amy, and this is one of the craziest stories I have ever, ever, ever had to tell. Well, I mean, it's up there. All right. So Lisa was headed down a dangerous road that would cost her everything she'd worked so hard to build, a road that allegedly involved diapers, pepper spray, and the attempted kidnapping of her former side piece's new love. Yeah, this story is out there. So sometime around midnight on February 5th, 2007, a hotel clerk working at the La Quinta Inn near the Orlando International Airport gave an exhausted looking Lisa the key to her room. She'd been driving all night. The trip from her home in Houston was well over 900 miles, and she took great care to minimize any stops along the way. But we'll come back to that. Sinia, after telling the hotel employee that she planned to go to bed as soon as she got into the room, Lisa did the exact opposite of that. Instead, she pulled on a dark wig and a trench coat, and she hopped on a shuttle to the airport, determined to confront William's lover, a much younger woman named Colleen Shipman. Armed with pepper spray and copies of some decidedly steamy emails between Colleen and her ex, she waited outside the airport for over an hour. Now, you would think that that long wait would give her some time to come back down to earth, or at the very least, she'd spend a minute reflecting on just how messy her life was about to get, but that shit blasted off a while ago. So as she waited in the shadows, all she could think about was Colleen Shipman. Now, here's the thing, though. When you're wearing a hooded trench coat and a cheap wig during your stakeout and you just kind of start lurking around, it's not exactly what you would call subtle. Colleen collected her luggage and she stopped to wait for a shuttle that would take her from the terminal to the parking lot. She noticed Lisa almost immediately, would have been pretty hard not to, when a woman dressed like a cartoon version of a stalker hops on the same bus as you and follows you off at the same stop in the middle of the night, you tend to notice she stands out. So on her way through the empty parking lot, Colleen heard Lisa break into a run behind her. She made a mad dash to her car, threw herself inside, and locked the doors. Lisa tried to open it, and then she starts banging on the window when she realized that she couldn't. Colleen, of course, refused to let her in. So Lisa starts saying, can you help me, please? This is according to the arrest affidavit. She says, my boyfriend was supposed to pick me up, and he's not here. I've been traveling, and it's late. Can you give me a ride to the parking office? So feeling understandably weirded out, Colleen refused to give her a ride, but she offered to send for someone to come and help. Lisa asked if she had a phone instead, and when the woman in the car informed her that the battery was dead, she burst into tears. Out of sympathy, Colleen rolled the window down an inch or two and immediately received a healthy shot of pepper spray in return for the gesture. Thankfully, she was able to speed off relatively unharmed, but totally, deeply shaken. So the police found Lisa still in the area trying to dispose of her disguise. Now, further investigation turned up a vast array of questionable items inside a black duffel bag. She had a steel mallet, a couple feet of rubber tubing, don't know what that was for, dear God, a BB gun, and a knife. She was adamant that she'd only meant to scare Colleen into hearing her out, although the freaking duffel bag obviously suggested that she had much more sinister ideas in mind. So after the assault, Colleen sat down with authorities to talk them through what happened. Now, they already knew who her assailant was, but Colleen herself had never met her, although William did call her Lisa in bed once. 
Not the smoothest of moves, but whatever, she got past it until Lisa pepper sprayed her in the face, that is. So as Colleen was starting to put all these pieces together, the police were telling her about this deranged woman. She realized that this Lisa she had encountered was William's Lisa. And even worse, Colleen told the police that she was pretty sure Lisa had been stalking her for at least two months. William and Lisa were both astronauts, and they spent a lot of time training for missions together. In 2004, they began to gravitate even closer, despite the fact that they were both already married. William would end up divorcing his wife in 2005, but Lisa remained married throughout the entire course of this secret fling. So after a while, though, William decided that he needed some space. He met Colleen. She was a captain in the Air Force in November of 2006, and... It was game over. He was immediately smitten. In January, he finally sat Lisa down and told her, so sorry, but there's someone else in the picture and we need to end this. William told detectives that he thought Lisa seemed disappointed, but ultimately accepting of his affection for another woman, because that's how it always goes. Come on. Although they were broken up, she continued to call him regularly. They kept in close contact. They're having lunch together at least once that January, in addition to training for a bike race together and taking the occasional trip to the gym. They are full on friends. Well, that was a hard month for Lisa. Around the same time, her marriage was likewise going supernova. She separated from the father of her three children after 19 years, and I'm probably didn't do her already fragile state of mind any favors. She used a key William had given her to get into his apartment while he was away, which gave her a chance to snoop around in his computer and find his emails as well as Colleen's flight schedule. So in one of these emails, Colleen wrote, I'll have to control myself when I see you. First urge will be to rip your clothes off, throw you on the ground and love the hell out of you. In another, she wrote, lots of love coming your way and kisses and a great big giant hug with my legs around you. This is not the kind of thing that Lisa wanted to see. Well, William wrote back to Colleen, you must really have me around your finger that I can't even function without you here. And with you here, I'm slightly smarter than a slug. These are the kind of emails that caused Lisa to make her fateful trip to Orlando just a few weeks later. In the wake of the attack, her friends, family, and co-workers were left reeling. She was once this distinguished pillar of society, a female astronaut, one that actually got to go to freaking space, no less. But now she was known as the astro nut that may or may not have worn a diaper on what may or may not have been a failed murder mission. She became the first ever astronaut to be arrested and charged with a felony. But that's not exactly the kind of achievement that makes little girls want to draw pictures of you on career day. It's a shame because she set out to do things that some people dream of their whole lives without ever getting to see them come to reality. Through hard work and academic excellence, Lisa made all of her dreams come true, only to end up losing a grip on all of it. Long before she became what Stephen King calls a space cowboy, she was simply a space cadet. She was one of about 3,500 other candidates vying for one of only 20 spots in NASA's space shuttle program. She was officially selected in the late 90s after an exemplary 10 years in the Navy. She went on to have a successful career as a robotics mission specialist. It was a demanding gig, especially for a mother with twin girls and a teenage son. But friends and family described her as devoted to her children, even though her profession demanded that she spend weeks at a time away from home. It's a tricky balance that a lot of working moms have a hard time trying to find, especially those in careers with a certain culture surrounding women in mostly male-dominated fields. In an interview with Ladies Home Journal, Lisa admitted that there were definitely some drawbacks to such a high-powered and high-pressure kind of job, especially when it came to raising a family. She said it's definitely a challenge to do the flying and take care of even one child and do all the other things you have to do, but I learned that you can do it. And for years, she did. She continued to excel. She was ascending through the ranks at NASA while doing it. But astronauts, much like Icarus, tend to suffer from a unique kind of problem. They end up flying too close to the sun. In 2003, Lisa lost one of her best friends when the Columbia shuttle exploded. By all accounts, the disaster affected her greatly. Some would later theorize the tragedy marked a turning point. It was the moment that the first chips and cracks started to show up in Lisa's psyche. 
Three years later, while preparing for a two-week trip into space, she explained to NASA why she decided to be part of the shuttle Discovery's voyage, even after seeing her colleagues' lives cut so tragically short. She said it's devastating for everybody, and when it's friends, people that you know, it's even harder. Three of those people were in my class. I knew them well, so that's hard. But I remember on that day sitting there with my son, and we're both watching together everything that's happening, and he reached over and took my hand and said, Mom, I still want you to go. So it's a terrible tragedy to have happened, but we know that there is a cause behind it and that we're going to continue to follow the dream. So with her son's beyond his years wisdom still fresh in her mind, Lisa and the rest of the six-person crew completed their mission to space without a hitch. She was in charge of the robotic operations on board ship, and she performed cutting-edge experiments using spacewalking robots. Her supervisors were deeply pleased with her performance when the crew finally made it back home safe and sound. Seven months after that once-in-a-lifetime trek into the stars, however— The experience of seeing them up close had apparently lost its glow. She plummeted from the highest point in her life to the lowest in a truly shocking way. She had a lot to answer for when she finally hit the ground, metaphorically speaking. So the day after the attack, Lisa entered a not guilty plea in response to charges of attempted murder and attempted kidnapping. By March 2nd, Florida prosecutors amended the charges to burglary and battery. The Orlando police pushed to keep attempted murder on the list, given what they had found in her stalker starter kit, but the state ended up dropping that charge altogether. Initially, Lisa's legal team aimed for an insanity plea. According to her attorney, two psychiatrists found that she was suffering from myriad psychological problems around the time of the attack, including a brief psychotic disorder with marked stressors. And what exactly were those stressors? Well, you had an apparent lack of emotional support from her spouse and a boyfriend that was moving on without her. You had the demands of raising three children while also pursuing her passions in multiple ways. And you had a pressure cooker kind of workplace culture where stressed people continued to get even more stressed because any perceived mental or physical ailments could cost them a spot on the next shuttle. So in addition to the insanity defense, the team managed to suppress her statements to the authorities. They cited the fact that she hadn't slept in over 24 hours when she was questioned and therefore she wasn't in any condition to make a sound judgment. But the defense argued that her actions weren't those of an unhinged woman with a score to settle, merely a desperate attempt to speak to someone in their vehicle. But what exactly was the pepper spray and bag full of suspicious murder paraphernalia for? Well, even the most naive observer should recognize that Lisa Nowak's behavior on February 5th was uncharacteristic and unpredicated for such an accomplished person with no criminal record or history of violence. That's what a PR consultant chimed in with a statement on her behalf. And her lawyer added, one good's work must count for something. So after being released on $25,000 bail, Lisa was allowed to go home after having her ankle fitted with a GPS device. Colleen filed a restraining order almost immediately afterward. As uncharacteristic as that attack might have been, her victim was far from convinced that Lisa meant her no harm. It was in her eyes, Colleen later told the court once the trial got underway. It was a blood-chilling expression of limitless rage and glee. The glee thing was especially creepy. And then she went on to describe the chronic aftershocks of this harrowing ordeal. Nightmares, a persistent fear for her own life, high blood pressure, migraines. She also explained that she'd gone out to get a concealed weapons permit and a shotgun as soon as she could. On May 15th, 2009, Lisa and her team decided to withdraw the insanity plea. By November of that year, she was ready to accept a deal that would reduce her charges to a single felony count of burglary and misdemeanor battery. She pled guilty. She got two days in jail with credit for time served, a single year of probation, and community service and anger management classes. The judge also ordered her to write a letter to Colleen expressing her deepest remorse, after which point she was to have no further contact with the woman. And in this court-ordered apology, she said, I hope very much that we can all move forward from this with privacy and peace. Although she avoided any serious time behind bars, her life never quite got back to its former glory. She was known 
forevermore as the astronaut that had worn diapers during the long drive to Orlando just so she wouldn't have to stop for bathroom breaks. And diapers were indeed found in the trunk of her car when she was arrested. And the police reports state that Lisa herself was the one that told them she used them on the trip. But she and her lawyer would adamantly deny this later on. To be fair, as weird as it sounds to us earthlings, the decision to shimmy into a pair of Depends probably seemed a lot more normal to an astronaut who would routinely wear similar garments on shuttle missions. After all, nobody wants the side effects of their morning coffee free-floating in zero gravity. Except the diapers in the car weren't actually Depends at all. They were toddler-sized, apparently left over from a rushed evacuation during 2005's hurricane season. With two toddlers and no available hotel rooms in sight, the family had to huddle in a parking lot with a large group of people seeking shelter, many of whom were forced to answer nature's call out in the bushes, and the diapers came in handy for a situation like that, her lawyer explained, and Lisa simply never took them out of her car even after they were finally allowed to return home. So as it turned out, there was actually a receipt in the car that showed Lisa checking into a room at a day's end, halfway between Houston and Orlando, so she did at least make one stop, for whatever that's worth. But true or not, late-night comedians and journalists alike ran with the diaper story, much to her dismay. As the initial buzz began to settle down, Colleen and William both retired from the military and moved to Alaska. Their relationship remained as strong as ever, after the deeply unsettling ordeal they'd been through. The couple eventually married and soon welcomed a healthy baby boy into the family. But for Lisa, things got worse before they got better. She lost her job at NASA as a result of her actions. But the events of February 5th highlighted a clear need for the space program to be more attentive to their employees' state of mind. They began adding policies to ensure that the astronauts underwent regular behavioral health screenings as part of their annual physical, and they focused on opening the door for the country's best and brightest to receive support when they feel buried under a mountain of professional obligations and expectations. But as far as Lisa's mental health was concerned, the damage had already been done. In 2011, after 25 years of service, a board of Navy admirals made the unanimous decision to relieve her of her duties with an other than honorable discharge. After successfully winning a motion to have her criminal record sealed later that year, Lisa then took her three children and disappeared into obscurity. Over a decade after this gifted and incredibly driven woman became consumed by the black hole of obsession, she's kept an extremely low profile. But her lawyer has said that Lisa's doing well these days and now works in the private sector. In the end, a horrible mistake sent her entire life off its course. Once celebrated for her intelligence and competitive spirit, she ended her impressive career as a woman known as the astronaut in diapers. The moral of the story? Reach for the stars. But if your goals involve a duffel bag full of murder tools and some suspicious-looking diapers, just stay on the couch. Unless you want to spend infinity and beyond in a maximum security jail. And that is your recap. But don't stop now. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, there's more recaps coming up right after this. See you there. <laughs> 